And good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Hopewell Football Coach Matt Weiss's Coaches Show here on Hopewell Sports Nation. I'm your host, Mike Vakovkin, joined by the coach, Matt Weiss. And we have a couple special guests here today, Coach. Can you uh, give us a little introduction? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this right here, this is my daughter, Hallie. She's five. And this is my youngest, Zeke. He's four. Uh, Mom is taking the oldest Jacks to a middle school hockey game tonight down in Greensburg, so it's daddy daycare. <laughs> Glad. I have a question for you. What grade are you in? Kindergarten? You're pretty tall for kindergarten. Second question. What's your favorite sport? Volleyball? <laughs> Big man. Zeke. Zeke. What's your favorite sport? Football. What else are you gonna say when your dad's the football coach? <laughs> right? All right, now, those were the important questions. Now we'll get to the fun questions, Ooh, right? Yeah. All right, coach, uh, we got two more weeks left of the coach's show. You got one more week left of the season. Uh, as I was thinking about the show today, um, one, of the th one of the themes this year, you've mentioned a few times this year how you've been, uh, you're big in the coaches' clinics, mm -hmm. and you and your staff have gone to a lot of them this, uh, you know, throughout your coaching career. Yeah. Has that helped you a little bit in terms of, you know, because I know you came in this season and everyone came in with, uh, you know, high expectations, maybe not championship expectations, but high expectations. Has going to that side, because I'm sure they talked to you about the mental side of coaching and all that, has that helped you, uh, you know, just deal with a little bit about this year? Yeah, you know, uh, you get a lot, you pick up a lot at, uh, at coaching clinics, um, a lot of X's and O's, but, you know, as you said, uh, with the ever evolving game of football, there's been a lot about the mental, uh, the mental game of football and, and your approach and everything uh, that goes into football. Um, so there's nothing specifically that talks about, uh, you know, having a hard season, high expectations, right. not doing as well as you w would want to do. Um, but, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of motivation uh, that they keep into it. Um, and there's a lot of little, just little things offensively and defensively that you can do just to try to keep the kids' interest, uh, just to try, try to spark some things, and uh, just to keep it going throughout that season. If I, if I had to ask you, you know, it's probably difficult, but uh, if I had to ask to describe, to look back at this season, uh, how, would it just be frustrating? Yeah, you know, frustrating would be a, a good word to do it because our, our two major uh, uh, themes that, you know, that I've been speaking with the kids a lot um, is uh, blocking and tackling, right? And those are basic fundamentals of football. Um, and it, it's been to see, it's, it seems to be a, a consistent theme that we've been struggling with. Uh, no matter how much we work on it, um, uh, you know, we, we really struggle uh, blocking, sustaining blocks. Um, so it's really become a problem with us offensively, and that's why we, it's, it's hard to get things going, right? Right. You struggle to get the run game going, and you struggle to get uh, anything other than a quick pass to go. Um, and that, that was evident on Friday night. You know, um, we were able to get uh, quick passes off. You know, other than that, we weren't able to run a lot of our concept passes or rollouts because we're not able to sustain our blocks. For whatever reason, you know, it's something that we've been working on, and it, it just really hasn't stuck. And the same thing on the defensive side of the ball. You know, the big thing we, you know, is tackling. Uh, if you don't tackle, you know you're gonna have a you're gonna have a, a, a running back go for 495 and five touchdowns on you. You know, uh, you know at the end of the day, you know my hats are off to uh, you know uh, to that young man from uh, from West Mifflin, uh, you know, in their offensive line for doing that. You know they were getting a good push off the ball, uh, and we were trying to make in-game adjustments, um, try to stop that, and you know the, he was just going. It, it comes down to a tackling thing, and it's just being tough. Uh, you know, so that's, that's, those are two themes that, you know, have been really, you know, have been a thorn on our side all year and something that we, we, we work on, you know, week in and week out. And it, it's just not, you know, it's not, it's not sticking. Right now. How, how much of it, how much is it, you know, I know you guys are still in it. Mm -hmm. You guys are still invested in it. Absolutely. And I'm not saying the coach, the kids aren't, mm -hmm. but we also have to deal with the fact that, you know, they're, 
15, 16 year old kid sometimes, and this wasn't an issue, you know, a lot at the beginning of the year. Is it maybe just because of the frustration of what's going on, and maybe uh, it's hard, it, it's being harder for them to stay motivated? Yeah, you know. Um, and you'll be able to see, and it's, it's evident on Friday nights and, you know, if you come by our practices to, to see certain kids that are, that are motivated, that are into it, that are still going to, uh, they, they're trying to perfect their craft because they want to write the ship. They want to, they want to change the narrative, uh, uh, you know, of, of Hopewell football. Uh, and there's just some kids that aren't, just not that mature yet, you right. know, uh, for a number of different reasons. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, these are, these are young kids. These are right. 14, 15, 16-year-old kids. And that's a tough thing to change, especially when you're getting to the point of the season where you, you know that you're out of it. Um, so how, and also how long? And also how long you've been at it? This yeah. is this is not this is not just eight weeks you've been doing this. Right. It's months, right? And this is uh, you know a lot of the work is uh, is going back to you know the off season. Uh, and we talk about the off season. We talk about strength and conditioning. You know, so a lot of these guys have been you know with us consistently since March. Uh, and right. then, especially with the football side of things, you know, we're talking May. You know, uh, we, we've been lining up and doing plays since May. Um, so it, it's been a long, it's, it's a grind. You know what I mean? Right. And that's and that's the thing that uh, you know, when, when you're trying to, to change a program and you're trying to to, to to get it to where the path that it needs to be, you know, that that long grind is something that you're going to have to uh, eventually put open arms around and welcome, or you know, it's, it's going to be a, a consistent theme of you know, upsetting seasons. Has your, as the season has gone on, has your message or the way you approach the kids or Pete, uh, or, or coaching them, you and your staff, has it changed any as the season gone on or is it the same way as it's been since the beginning of the year? No, we're the same way. Uh, you know, after, um, after we were officially eliminated mathematically from the playoffs, you know, uh, at our at our Monday meetings, uh, uh, you know, I, I I told the kids, I'm like, no matter what, you're going to get all of it from the coaching staff. You know, we're going to continue to coach like we're still in the playoffs uh, because you know, it, one, it's not it, it, us as competitors, as adults as competitors, um, we feel like we would be shortchanging the kids and ourselves, and, and that's not right. That's something that I myself would not be able to live with if. You know, I just approach the practice like, oh, well, we're out of it, so, hmm, you know, we'll, we'll get a couple plays in and we'll be done. The kids are still going to get coached to the best of our abilities, and we still want them to, to perform and, and try to get better. Because at, at the end of the day, our seniors that are leaving us, you know, and that are going to go on to the next level, whether it's playing the sport, going to the job field, or uh, going to college, you know, how you approach this is going to affect how you approach you know, right. life after high school. Right. And for the underclassmen, you're setting the table for next season. So if you take this approach of lackadaisical, uh, not there, not committing to it, that may carry with you in the offseason. That's not something that you want. Speaking of seniors, you have nine seniors, I believe. Uh, this will be their last game with the Hopewell Vikings on Friday. That's motivation alone. Yeah. Uh, those guys... I'm not sure how how many of those guys have been with you for all four years, but regardless, if, even if it's been for one year, as you said, they've been with you for March and they've yeah. put in the time. I'm just gonna I'm gonna mention uh, a few of them, and if you just give some quick, uh, when you think about these players, you know, maybe a year from now or two years, you know, what's your memory of them gonna be? Uh, we'll start with, uh, you know, one of your senior captains, Jacob Brunton. Yeah, uh, you know. Uh, you know, Jacob, you know, we call, we call him Pint. Um, uh, he, uh, the thing that's going to stick with me is, man, you talk about a hard worker uh, and, and someone that has really bought into, uh, you know, the culture of what we're trying to, you know, establish. That's him. He embodies that. And, you know, if I could have a team full of Jacob Bruntons, man, that, that would be fantastic because they're going to pour their heart and soul. And it's, that's, that's an extension of the coaching staff on the field. You know, that, that, that's a guy that, you know, that stepped into a role of a, of a Sonny Casanzale, you know, when he left to, to, you know, to be that leader. You know, he's not very vocal, but he leads by example. And when he leads by example, it, it speaks pretty loudly. Nazimir Jeter. Nas, man. Listen, I wish Nas would have played all four years of high school football. You know, I've been lucky to have him for the two years that he's played with us. You know, Nas brings a competitive nature 
and a certain level of juice to the program you know, that, that we were missing. And Nas has really come into himself and, and become a leader, and he's taken constructive criticism so much better this year. You know, we had a moment at Avonworth um, that I look back to, and Nas could have went one of two ways. He could have said, I'm done, and tuned us out, but he didn't, he responded. You know, and he stepped up and manned up and owned his mistake, and since that moment, you know, has been nothing short of a fantastic leader for us. And this, this is one of the ones that when I look back, uh, I'm not even part of the program, but I, I feel bad for him a little bit, uh, actually a lot, is because I know what he, I know what he wanted to do this year was uh, Tyler Lewis. Uh, he, I, 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 I'm not sure what the exact injury was, but it's, uh, it, it's put him down for most of the year, if not all the year. Uh, your heart probably goes out to him. It, your senior year... That's not how you want to go out right. with high school football. Yeah, no, you know, it's kind of the same thing with, uh, with, with Tyler, the uh, same thing with Nas. Man, I wish I would have had him for all four years. You know, because he, he really hit the scene last year and made a splash. Um, you know, he had a, he had a, uh, a ham, hamstring injury um, just before camp started. Um, and just the way that it happened, like, it, it was it, it, every time he was just at, at the cusp of coming back. <clears throat> He just had he had a minor setback, and that, that was the theme throughout the season. Um, and, you know, I love having multi-sport athletes, right? And I love guys that come from different sports that, that want to play football and want to help contribute. Tyler's a big trap guy, uh, you know. So towards you know these last couple weeks here, uh, you know, you know, we were kind of the message that I sat down with Tyler and talked to him, like, you know, at, at this point in the season, but you know, you'd be better off just. Let's just focus on getting you healed for track because the hamstring injury, you know, especially for that track, thing could, yeah. that thing could, that, it takes a long time for recovery, and especially for track where you're constantly yeah. using that muscle. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that he's he's good for his, you know, because you don't want his senior to miss out on Everything. both his sports, right? If not, all, more right. sports if he plays more. So you know, it was a tough decision to make, and uh, you know, he wishes every day that he could be out there on the field. And you know, to his credit, he has not missed a single practice. You know, he's there supporting his teammates. He's there every every Friday night uh, supporting them. And you know, he as as much as it hurts me to, and it hurts him to not be able to play, I appreciate what he has been able to offer. You know, to his teammates off the field. Speaking of multi-sport stars, Isaiah Pizzano. Man, you know what? Congratulations to Isaiah. He just recently received an offer. Uh, two offers for wrestling, uh, one from uh, UPJ, um, they're in the PSAC, and he went out on a visit uh, this past weekend to another PSAC school uh, out in Millersville. Uh, so, you know, so his wrestling, he, he's looking to take a big year with uh, wrestling, you know, but when he was able, to, before he got, uh, you know, injured with his shoulder, uh, that's why he's been out the past few weeks, um, you know, he he's contributed so much to this team, and yeah. I mean, you saw it just by... You know, his, his work ethic and just the way he competes, man. You know, he's brought a lot of toughness and grit to this team. And, you know, you talk about another kid. You know, I had the 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 the, the fortune to, to coach him for four years. And he's just been a worker, a grinder, just a one of the toughest kids that I've coached, you know, throughout my tenure, my 15 years of coaching. Big-time athletic ability, yeah, too. absolutely. Just two more guys. Uh, Sergio Garcia, he's... Uh, He's played for you on offense, but also he uh, uh, a lot of time at the defensive end for you this year. Yeah, yeah. You know, Sergio, um, he's kind of he went through a couple different position changes, you know, throughout uh, throughout four years with us. And you know, you talk about another tough kid, and that's Serge. Um, you know, he started off as a lineman, right? Uh, came up, uh, switched the, to. Uh, he was he's like, coach, I want to try to be quarterback. He tried to be quarterback last year to start the season off. Gave him his opportunities, and you know he was he was uh, mature enough to come up to me. He was like, "Coach, it's not working. I, was, I, I need to switch my position." So that's when we switched him to tight end last year. And um, he was a linebacker on defense and, and, and did great. Um, but you know this year re he really found his niche at uh, outside linebacker, uh, DN for us. Um, you know, so he, he's had a very good season as well. And, and I'm going to miss Sur Serge's toughness too. Man, he brings a level of toughness that. You know, I, I look back to that New Brighton game when we ran a uh, we ran a split zone play, and he absolutely demolished this lineman from New Brighton, and it was something that I just kept replaying in films. Like this kid's legs just collapsed, and man, it was fantastic. Like I, I, it speaks to the toughness of Serge. 
The last guy, he's uh, everything I hear about him, he actually lives in our neighborhood. Uh, he's just one of these team guys. He'll do whatever, probably whatever you ask of him. Uh, he's very diverse in terms of uh, his interests outside of sports, but uh, Ethan Pletcher. Listen, you talk about a kid that's going to be a future president of the United States, yeah. Ethan Pletcher. You know, he, he does so much in his life just outside yes, of football. Yes. You know, multiple sports, multiple um, uh, activities involved with, with school, not to mention he's in all honors classes. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, he's currently building that boat dock for his for his Eagle mock, Scout project. Mock trial musical. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, you, you talk a jack of all trades, and really, a kid that you could see his toughness building throughout all four years as a football player. Um, and this is a guy that we could lean on to put him in multiple yeah. positions, uh, both offensively and defensively. And because he's such an intelligent kid. Nothing is too much for him. You can give him a plate full of different positions, and he'll be like, all right, coach, I'll do it. I, you know, I can't say enough about him. And I'm, I'm being dead serious. I'm, don't be surprised if he's a politician yeah. down the road, you know, making decisions, not at the state, but for, for the federal government right. level, because this kid is, he's got it, man. Yeah. And he's, he has a very bright future, um, you know, outside of athletics. And I'm super, super happy and privileged to have coached him as well. One more, see, one more question before we uh, move on to... A couple questions about next year. Looking back at this season, what you played a lot of good teams, a lot of quality teams, playoff teams that could, who knows, win the win the championship. Who do you believe maybe your top two teams or best team that you played this year were, most talented team that you played this year? Man, you know, so far this year, I'd say our top two teams that we played, uh, absolutely, Avonworth, uh, you know, um, who was picked as a conference favorite. Uh, you know, Duke does a fantastic job with them down there. Uh, you know, they're just a machine, a uh, consistent machine. Uh, you know, West Mifflin team is tough. You know, you, you, got, you got kids from a diverse area down there, uh, you know, especially those Duquesne kids um, coming up the hill, and they're giving a, an added level of toughness to that team that, you know, that they wouldn't necessarily have. Uh, so, you know, so those are two of the, probably the better teams that we played all season. And, um, you know, just watching the film with Beaver, um, you know, you know, Court's doing a, a great job with them as well. Um, you know, they're not very flashy in what they do, but they're good at what they do. Um, you know, the, their two losses on the year were to uh, to Avonworth and West Mifflin, and they hung in tough with those, you know, with those teams for, for the entirety of that game. You know, both of those games. So, you know, I expect to see uh, you know a, a tough Beaver team as well this week. A uh, couple questions about next year, Coach. Absolutely. When do you start? Yeah, everybody can see you. When do you start thinking about next year, or have you already? You know, maybe not while you're coaching, but in your private time at home, driving in the car. When, when, you know, when do you start thinking about? All right, maybe this could work next year, or maybe I want to add this, or you know, how's your mind go? Uh, yeah, you take notes. You take notes, uh, but I don't start thinking about next year until uh, probably after the state championships. You know, because uh, after our season's over, you know, I'll I'll, I'll do a lot of self reflecting. Um, and I'll finish watching out, you know, the rest of uh, the rest of the Whitfield championships and the state championships. Um, you know, but after that, that's that's when we start, you know, taking a look and we start reviewing film. Um, I, I do a lot of self critiquing at first. You know, what can I do better? What do I need to change as a coach? Um, and then, you know, moving to us as a coaching staff. What do we as a coaching staff need to do better? What what do we need to pick up? You know, and then we'll start watching film. Um, so that'll happen after the state championship. So sometime in December. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be I'll become a football fan for you know for the teams in our conference for the remainder of the season, um, and I'll just be a playing football fan when you know after that after they're out. Um, but uh, but the heavy work starts in December. That's when we'll really start you know critiquing uh, you know uh, the season as a whole. Eighth grade team. You know, I, I that that was another theme uh, this year. You talked about the youth on your team. And a lot of the, you know, we only mentioned nine seniors. Um, so you're going to have a lot of kids hopefully returning next year. Uh, you know, you know, there's a lot of talk about the eighth grade team, but at the same time, they still are eighth graders. Uh, how much realistically do you think uh, can you count on or maybe are you counting on uh, getting from them next year? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, hats off to those kids. You know, they, they – 
they played an excellent season. Um, you know, they there are some true athletes in that eighth grade class. Um, you know, but you know, like you said, at the end of the day, not to take anything away from them, their eighth graders will still have to make that jump up to ninth grade. Uh, and as you see with our sophomore class that we had this year, um, them playing a lot as freshmen was taxing. You know, as a freshman, your body and, and your mind, they're not prepared for that, right? For that, that long haul of the season and that grind, especially if you need to lean on them. Uh, you know, so, so the big thing with those guys is, is going to be their off season, right? Is, is going to be putting in the time in the weight room to get their bodies one ready because, you know, uh, seventh and eighth grader, you're able to use your athleticism uh, to, you know, to make plays, right. uh, to get around kids. You know, when you get to high school, it, it's more even, right? It's just like when, when, when high school gets to college, it's, it's an even more of a level right. playing field. Um, so what they need to do, their biggest thing is, is to get their bodies prepared and ready, you know, for, for the grind of a high school football season. Um, and then the second thing that they need to do is just, is just to continue to come around to, one, to, to keep their confidence and build off the confidence that they had this year, uh, and, and just to continue to apply that and continue to work on their craft um, and, and to be fundamentally sound. Because this is the biggest thing. If you can get the little things down, the fundamentals down early, that's going to carry you for the long, long haul. And, and you know, i am always been a, 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 a man that, you know, a coach that I don't care what grade you're in, I don't care who you are, what your family is or anything. If you're good enough to play and you're going to make those plays in Sicily, then you're going to play. And if you're a freshman, so be it. We'll take it. Nobody has a position one, year to year, week to week. You know, it's, it's a battle every week. And, you know, that, that's, that's, how, that's, that's how good teams win. Friday night, what's your message going to The last thing is, uh, what's your message going to be to your team and especially your seniors on, uh, on senior night on Friday? Have you yeah. uh, started to think about that yet? Yeah, you know, um, it's uh, until you're a senior playing in the realization that it's your last football game in high school, um, you don't, you don't, you don't understand the depth of it. Um, so my message is, is going to be for the underclassmen is to, you know, play for these seniors because at some point you're going to be there. I don't expect them to understand it. I don't expect them to understand it their senior year until literally the week before your last game that it, it clicks in like this is it. Um, you know, uh, so it's going to be for the underclassmen play for the seniors and for the seniors, you know, hasn't gone the way we wanted. No. But remember the good that you played, you know, on this field with your teammates uh, and just go out, you know, try to go out on top. You know, this team's going to the playoffs that we're playing. Man, what a heck of a senior night it make to, to, uh, to get a win on your, your home field, your last game, and uh, send a team going to the playoffs uh, home with their tails stuck between their legs because they, they took a loss. Last thing is uh, non-hope all related. I know, uh, I know somebody was uh, pretty happy on Saturday with uh, – <laughs> Oh, Ohio State, Penn State. Oh, yes. Phenomenal. That game, man, I mean, defensive battle, right, number one. Um, you know, both defenses are – that's a good defense that Penn yeah. State has. As much as, you know, it, it hurts me to say it, you know, this is kind of what Ohio State's been waiting for is for that defense to come along, you know, to show up. And, and you know, they put in a quality game. Um, and it came down to, you know, what team was going to make more plays in the end. Um, you know, Call Penn State, whatever their game plan was, as, as conservative as they was with Aller. Um, you know, I'm coming, I the concern as an Ohio State fan was the, the, the Penn State running game. Yeah. Right. Uh, you got you got two studs in that backfield, and especially when they're back there together. Man, that's a scary situation. Right. Um, you know, Ohio State proved early that they were going they were going to handle that run game, so it kind of made the passing game a lot easier. You know, Ohio State's going through their struggles a little bit with the quarterback. Uh, he's a little antsy, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is a it's a big confidence booster for them. Um, and that's going to propel them into uh, to, for the rest of the season because uh, you can call it, the Big Ten is a meat grinder, man. That's 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 an old school football conference, just like you know the SEC East, uh, you know, or sorry, the SEC West, uh, you know, and uh, the East. Sorry, and um, you know it, they got a trap game this week against Wisconsin. Right? That's, that's that's no pushover. Right. And then and they got their following game. They they have Rutgers, and that's uh, and that's, the, that's no the, pushover either. And then the big one, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, We'll see about that. Hopefully, uh, Michigan didn't take too much too much video. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on them guys, man. All right, Coach. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate the guest host. How do you set up? You got to say goodbye to the camera. She had a long, <laughs> long day. day. School kindergarten is a grind, man. Uh, trust me, I know. But preschool apparently doesn't. See, O H. Hello. There we go. All uh, right, Zeke. Train them young. Appreciate <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you guys joining us, and we'll be back next Monday. 
for the final co uh, Matt Weiss Coaches Show here from Shelligan's Bar and Grill. We appreciate you tuning in and uh, hope you show up for uh, senior night for the players, also the cheer cheerleaders this Friday. That ceremony will start at 6.30 this Friday at Tony Dorsett Stadium. Thank you. Sounds good.